dedicated. Uh, okay. King of Kings. Dedicated, stand on the Bible, it's predicated. Been in tall, spirit elevated. I love with the word that hey. activated. Uh, dedicated, stand on the Bible, it's predicated. Been in tall, spirit elevated. I love with the word that hey. activated. Uh, dedicated, stand on the Bible, it's predicated. Been in tall, spirit hey. elevated. I love with the word that hey. activated. Uh, dedicated, Woo. dedicated, uh, dedicated, uh, dedicated. Uh. King of Kings is my Elohim, it's the most high, yeah. Hallelujah. All praises to the King. Uh, as always, it's blessed to be another, uh, to be present. Hallelujah. Amongst the saints in this earth to give Abba the praise, the honor, and the glory which he deserves. Hallelujah. And is worthy. Hallelujah. Uh, today's lesson, part four of Journey, Journey to Dedication, part four. Subtitle is Yah's will. Hallelujah. So we're going to be dealing with the will of Yah this week. And this is part four of Journey to Dedication. Um, we thank the Almighty Yah, hallelujah, and his son, our King Yeshua, for, uh, for life. Hallelujah. For, 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 for wisdom and for understanding, for peace, joy, and the Ruach. And I think that uh, what he's been giving me the um, last couple of hours is the, the will is outside of his love. The will is, is, is we ain't going to put more important than any other part of his word. But to understand the will is to understand his word. And we're going to get into his will today. And we're going to see that to know his will is easy. It's not hidden from us. It's not a mystery to us who, who, who have a desire to seek after him and know his will. Because we'll see the day y'all will that if you don't know his will, it's going to be destruction for you. So his desire is for us to know his will. That's his desire for us to know his will. Because once you know his will, you will know his way. Hallelujah. So uh, let us pray and we're going to get to the lesson, Yah's will. Hallelujah. Abba Yah, hallelujah. Father, we thank you again for waking us up this morning. We thank you for keeping us while we slept. We thank you for waking us up and not just waking us up, but waking us up with the mind of Hamashiach. Hallelujah. With, with the mind of, of your, your, your son, our king, Yeshua. We, we also want to give you thanks, hallelujah, for, 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 for giving us the strength to even get out of the bed this morning. Hallelujah. The strength to, 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 to. Aid ourselves to brush our teeth, to even wash our faith, it, our face. There's so many people who woke up this morning, laid down in, in perfect health, but woke up this morning with, hallelujah, soreness of pain or elements in that body where, where they couldn't even move, hallelujah. But we, we thank you that we were able to get up, hallelujah, with the strength that you have given us, hallelujah. And, and we glorify you in these bodies right now. Uh, we don't take anything for granted. Hallelujah. We know everything. Hallelujah. It, it is according to your perfect plan. Hallelujah. And we just thank you that we will be vessels of righteousness, vest, vessels of honor. Hallelujah. We thank you. Uh, Yeshua, our King. Hallelujah. We, we thank you for you walking that, be, being a perfect example. Hallelujah. The express image of who the Father is. Get, get, leaving us an example of how we should walk. We're forever indebted to you, to what you've done in this earth and even what you're doing right now. We thank you. We love you. We ask that, that the Ruach, hallelujah, will, will do as the word has told us that we believe. Lead us into all truth. Hallelujah. We, we pray right now that our hearts and our minds will be submitted unto uh, the, the will of Abba Yah right now. That uh, any distractions is inside of our minds. Hallelujah. Those things is contrary to your word. Those thoughts is contrary to your will have, have to flee from us right now. This atmosphere will be set. Hallelujah for, for, for the spirit to, 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 to dwell at liberty to bring us to understanding. Uh, we pray for our brothers and sisters who could not make it on. And even our brothers and sisters that. Sick and body, we pray for that healing. We pray for understanding at this hour. We love and we thank you. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. First Corinthians uh, 
110, as we always read, 1 Corinthians 110, now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Hallelujah. So, as I said, this lesson here is, is, uh, is about getting an understanding of, of Yah's will. Hmm? Um, the, a quick answer, a quick scripture to give out, to it will be Matthew 26, 39. When you go to Matthew 26, 39, the quick answer to it would be uh, when the Messiah said, not my will, but let your will be done. Right? That, that's what his will is. His will is, is not our own understanding, not what we desire, but let what he desires to be done. Whatever his will is, and we're going to find out his will is his word, that's what we uh, want, want to come into our, into our mind so we can walk it out. So that's the first thing we're going to understand that. That it's not about what we want, it's about what he wants. But what does he want? Hallelujah. It is in the word. It is his word. We're going to say that right off the bat. It's his will is his word. First level is his written word. What we read is his, is his will and is given us an understanding on how we should walk in this earth. So all we have to do is read his word, hallelujah, and that's his will. Because it's going to manifest who he is. But we have a small problem here. Because the issue is you can know his will, right? But how to perform it and how to live in it is altogether different. You see, so you you, you can know the, what his will is, but can you perform it? Can, can you live it? So the problem is no man can live and walk in his will outside of his spirit. Because uh, all men have fallen short of the glory. And sin, hallelujah, will prevent you from walking according to the will. So we're going to get into it today to see how we get around sin so we can walk in his will. And I'll say this right now. You can't walk in both. That's going to make you lukewarm. you either walking in the will or you're not. No, no in between. So let's 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 get the um let's read Psalms 37. Let's get to Psalms 37, verse 4. Let's read this. I'm gonna start at verse it's verse 4, but I'm gonna start at verse 1. It says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as green herb, as the green herb. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. So thou, so, so thou shalt dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of your heart. Right. So, so what the scriptures let us know. First of all, we got to trust in him, right? But the desires of the heart is going to give us, he has to give us, first of all, a heart, right? He has to, because our heart, it says that the heart is deceitful above all things, right? So you don't want the, the desires of this, this heart unless this heart has been uh, circumcised, right? So what he's talking about is this new heart that he has to, he has to put his desires in us. And he's only going to put his desires in the new heart. So now, the desires that we have should match up with the desires we have for our life. This is what he's going to give us. He's not going to put nothing in your heart that's going to displease him. See, 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 one of the issues is we, we, we start off wrong because most of us weren't raised by the parents had good intentions. Right. But most of us weren't raised with the understanding of uh, 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 you need to seek. What what Yah's will is for your life? We just we just grew up. Hey, get you a job, get you a house, get you a car. Uh, uh, you know these type of things. 
So so the stuff that we desire is what we thought that would satisfy us. But what we should be teaching the kids is what is Yah's will for your life? So as, 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 as kids, they should start off seeking what is his will? What is his plan for their life? See, most of us, we, 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 we get in the middle of our own plans and realize, nah, this, this ain't working out. But, but thank, thank the Almighty for, for mercy and grace that we repent, turn from our own wicked ways, hallelujah, and submit ourselves unto his, his, his word to find out the way. So the first thing is, give me a heart where you can plant, hallelujah, your, 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 your will where I can desire your will. Because this is the thing that's going to please you. So, so Psalms 37.4 is important because he will give you the desires of your heart, but you want the desires of, of this, this new heart. Now, if you go to seeking the desires of that fleshly heart, guess what? You're going to get those two. Look, you, you actually, you can have two people, Zion, doing the exact same thing. I mean, the exact same work. Two people can be doing the exact same work. And guess what? It can actually be a good work. But it's about the heart. One could be doing it. He has put this in their heart, so they're doing it to please him, right? So it's joy in their heart. It's 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 uh it's it, it they're joyful while doing it. But the other person, they're doing it with murmuring and complaining, even if they can have like a little smiley face on. But in their heart, they don't really want to be doing it. They're just doing it just because it's the thing to do. So what's going to be the reward? You're wasting your time. It's in vain. You're doing it in vain. So it's all vanity. So this is why the heart must be right. When we're doing things, when we're walking in the will of Yah, we're gonna we're gonna read all this, but we're just going over right now. Um, let's we're gonna start off in John. Since we're reading John seven through ten, we're gonna start off at John seven because that's where he that's why I get this from. This lesson is in John seven. Uh, let's see here. We'll get straight to the point. We'll start at verse uh, 13. We're going to start at verse 13. It says, How be it no man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews? Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How know this man letters, having never learned? Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine, but, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. So y'all will next week, we'll get into the doctrine part, right? But, but I, we're going to deal with the will today. So he letting us know. If any man would, would do his will, he's going to know my teaching. Doctrine is the teaching, right? So if you're doing the will, you're going to know the teaching. Then he says, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. So the Messiah is saying, look, basically, if y'all doing the will, you would know if what I'm saying or teaching is of the will of Yah, is the truth. See, this is another way where, where we can't get deceived. We walking in the will, you're going to know if somebody's teaching the, the doctrine. What had, we don't, we'll, we'll go off through it, but by the time the Messiah got on the scene, the teaching was off. They weren't teaching. The, the, no, they didn't know the will of Yah as a whole. They had started doing what the Pharisees was teaching them. So they had, they had started following the will of man. Let me read on down. So he said that if we, if we do his will, he shall know the doctrine. 
He shall know of the doctrine. Whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no man and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law? And yet none of you keepeth the law. Why ye go about to kill me? It's a big problem right here because as we're going to see today, y'all will that his will is his word. So how how, how are they these people preaching the word, teaching the word, and the people don't know the will? Because what can happen is, and what has happened. The law, what the, what the script says, the Bible says the law is what? Spiritual. It says the law is spiritual. So if you're you're not going to be able to walk according to his will because everything is going to be according to the flesh. So you can actually be doing something that seems right, but where's the heart at in the matter? Let's go to John 6, get an understanding. Let's get there. We're going to start at verse. Uh, we'll start at verse. 23. Okay, we'll start at verse 23. Hold on here. Let me get this We'll start at verse 23. It says. Now, this is, let me, let me give a little context of it. You know what? Let me start at verse 1 and 3 just to get a little context. All right. It says, at the, let me start at verse 1 through 3 to get context. After these, after these things, Jesus went over to the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was not. Okay? Now we're going to go to verse 23. So I just wanted to bring it in because they seen him do some miracles, right? But watch this. We couldn't fathom this right now today. It says, how be it there that came over? Because he had left. When you read the whole thing, you see the Messiah, he, he ended up leaving where he done the miracles at. So other people heard about the miracles. Now they're coming to look for him. And that's where we're picking it up at. It says, how be it there came other boats from Tiberias, nigh unto the place where they did eat bread after the Lord had gave thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when comest thou hither? Jesus answered them, answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Seek ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. So right here, just letting us know something. Well, let me just explain this up. Labor not for the meat which perished, but for the meat which, in, which endured unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him have God the Father sealed. They said unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye may believe on him whom he have sent. Okay? He says, Jesus answered and said unto him, unto them, This is the work of God, that ye may believe on him. Whom he have sent. Okay? So look, first, they come in to receive some flesh. They want fleshly, they want their fleshly desires to be fulfilled. They're not coming to the Messiah even based off the healing. Huh? They're not coming to get, in other words, they're not coming to get deliverance. They're coming to get filled things of the flesh. So just understand, just think if you see somebody, if the Messiah really was 
here right now and he's here he's in us right let's say you see somebody really doing the work they're healing their they uh they're, 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 they're healing they're, they're making people whole and then you run up and say hey man hey let me get this house you got a house for me let me get a car let me get some more food or something like that you want stuff in the physical realm you're not trying to be made whole but then the messiah says something that's important for us to we're going to get to it. the messiah says something right here in this verse 29 he says, <laughs> Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work. They want to know what work must we do. He said, this is the work that ye believe on him whom he has sent. So he basically saying, look, you got to believe on me. Right. So this is a work in itself. Why is this a work? The, the, the work is to believe on him. So you have to even work to even believe on the Messiah because the work is you down to your flesh. Because we cannot lean on our own understanding. We must put all our trust and faith in him to even get to the will. So the first thing is we have to believe on the Messiah. See, most people think it's easy just to believe. I just believe, right? What do you believe? Because after you say you believe, we're going to have And how do I see that you believe? By you walking according to the word. But they had to believe that he was who the father had sent. We're going to see because they ain't had a New Testament. What was he supposed to do when he came? They couldn't believe it. Because a lot of them knew, hey, this, this is uh, uh, Joseph's son. This is the carpenter. Let me read. <laughs> So I just want us to catch this. It, it, it's a, the work was to believe on him. They said, therefore, unto him, what sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What does thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you. Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father gave you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is, the, is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then they, I'm sorry, then said they unto him, Lord, even more give us this bread. Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I say unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father and him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. For I, for I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will, which and this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that all, watch this, that, that of all which hath, he hath given me, I shall lose nothing, but shall rise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which sees the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So we see. Part of this will is that whoever will leave on the sun is going to get everlasting life. But what does it mean to believe on the sun? Hmm? It says, and this is the will of him that sent me. That everyone which sees the sun and believeth on him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day. Look, not one of us has ever seen the Messiah physically. And I'll tell you this, and I could be off on this now. When people be talking about they seen the Messiah and they dream and all this type of stuff, hey, I ain't never I ain't never seen no scripts where he's showing his face to nobody in no dream. And people come up with all type of pictures and say he looked like this, he looked like that. Hey, I don't believe it, okay? Because 
I understand the Bible says what? Now we understand he has a physical body and he does have uh, uh, he does have features. OK, he does have features. So he, he may. That's why I say it's a little touch. It's a little touchy for me. But if you say you have a dream, you, you see the father's face and then this guy drawing a picture, this dude drawing the picture. So now you got 10 different pictures of what he looked like. The word is the same. He ain't gonna be short to you and tall to somebody else. He ain't gonna have black hair to you and gray hair to somebody else. So when I lined four people up, told me they had a dream that, that, that Yeshua was taking them here, taking them there, and all of them telling me he looked totally different. Nah. Now to be different, you say the word came to me through another vessel. Because the word. We, the word will get in me. He'll get in whoever on his line and, and he'll send that word to different people. Like we got Jeremiah, you got Isaiah, you got all these prophets who the word got in and he went to them. But when you tell my, you know how the Messiah looked because of you, you had a dream and everybody got different visions. Hey, I ain't gonna call you a liar, but hey, I don't know. All right, I'm just gonna say that. But let me get back to the point. All right. The point is this right here. He says, <laughs> let me read verse 41, because this is why. Hallelujah. It said, let me forget to it. The, the Jews then murmur at him because he said, I am the bread which come down from heaven. Okay? He, why, why are they murmuring when he's telling them, I'm the bread that came down from heaven? Because in their minds, they understand, like, hold on. This man is 30 years, something years old. And we understand this bread that came down, we talking about over a uh, thousand some years prior to this, a hundred years prior to this. How is he saying that he the bread that came down? Let me finish reading. And they said, is this not Jesus, son of Joseph, let's say earlier, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he said, I came down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said to them that murmured not among themselves. He said, watch this. That murmured not among themselves. No man can come to me except the Father which have sent me drew him, and I will raise him up at the last day. And it is written, the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that have heard and have learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man have seen the Father, save which is of God, he have seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me have everlasting life. We're going to see how, why this will is so important, because this will is tied. The, look, the will of the Messiah, the, the will of the Father, the will of the Father is the Messiah. He is the Father's will. He is the word. He is the teaching. We got scriptures. We, we got the scripture. Well, ah, let me get to it now. We, we got a scripture in the, old, in, in, in the law that says, it says the law is perfect, even converting the soul. And that's a true scripture. The, the law is perfect and it will convert the soul. But that's if your heart, if you're walking in perfection, but if you break it, what happens if you break the law? If you break the law, what happens if you don't have the Messiah? If you break that law, which is perfect, and you don't have a Messiah, will it? Will you still get in the kingdom? Will it convert your soul to get into the kingdom? Somebody said something. You will not. It will not. So I want us to understand this. He is the law. He is the teacher. He is the doctrine. And this is why we're going to see today, y'all will, that he's telling them that, yo, you have to believe on me. Let's go to Psalms 33. Let's go to Psalm 33. Hallelujah. And it was hard for them to believe on him. 
because they 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 they, they, they knew him. Just like, and it ain't no difference. It's hard for people to believe this word because they think they know already. Most people think they already know. So it's hard for people just to read the word and believe what it say to allow this word to transform you. See, this thing is far different than you can get the word and quote the word and you even can teach the word, but to perform it and to live the word is totally different. He don't want us just to, he wants us to recite his word, to get his word down in our heart. We're going to read the scripture that say that too, right? Because his word will talk to you. It'll transform you, but you got to allow it to do it. Hmm? But it's hard for most people to believe it and allow it to transform them. Because we have already set up for the most part our own wills, our own plans in life. So what, what most people do, they try to fit the word around their own will that they already got set up. So when they read the Bible, they try to fit their little fit the word around their life. No, you, you the word doesn't fit around your life. You you fit into the word. Hmm? You, you, you don't read scripture for the mindset of you already doing this. So oh, let me read this scripture and let me see how I can take that off, take that part off. Not fit my life. No, nah, it's the whole word. And if your life don't line, if our life don't line up with it, we need to what? Be conformed to the word. The word don't conform to us. Hmm. All right. Psalms 33, verse 8. So you get, we're we, we going to read in Deuteronomy 2. That's why it was so important that law, when he told Moses them, he, he, he said, look, teach the kids. You got to start off teaching the kids. So as, as, when they little babies, they grow up. They already conform to this thing. Because you, you, you wait and most people get, most of us came to this truth or uh, start trying to walk it when, when you're uh, a teenager, you in your, uh, uh, in your adulthood. You already think you know. So now you come to the word with a mind of I already know. Don't know nothing. Psalms 33, verse 8. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. Watch this. The thoughts of his hearts to all generations. It says the thoughts of his heart to all generations. So what this is letting us know that whatever nation, whatever people, whatever they got going on, whatever we got going on, he gonna bring it to not if it's not according to his word. His, 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 it says his thoughts into all generations. Meaning his counsel, his thoughts, his will is going to get done. Anything outside of his will is going to be brought to nothing. Go to Isaiah 46.10. It'll make it a little bit more clear. Make it a little bit more clear. Yeah. See, because we come up, different nations, different people come up with their own little things they got going on, how they want to work things out. But he already have his will. His will, if your will don't line up with his will, whatever you got going on going to end up being nothing. His will will be done. No matter what you don't set up or what plans you don't set up, his will is going to be done. The, the, the question is, the question is, are you going to be a workman with him? Because everybody was brought to this earth for a purpose. Now, he already said, we're going to read it later on, too. He, he, he he desired for all to be saved, right? He 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 want everybody to, to come to him, whoever come to him, to get everlasting life. But that's gonna be up to you. You could choose to be a, a a vessel of dishonor or a vessel of honor, but his purpose will be fulfilled. Isaiah forty six ten. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, 
the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I would and, and I would do all my pleasures. He letting us know, look, whatever he already set forth from the beginning, whatever he already is, it's going to get what? It's going to get done. It doesn't matter what we got going on. We got to get our minds right, right by trusting his word to be a part of what he got going on. Because if you want the opposite of what he got going on, think about the uh, when uh, the ark, not the ark, but yeah, it was the ark, when Noah, huh? he, he already had set a design that, uh, yo, because these people acting so wicked, I'm going to give them 120 something years to get right. The, the will is that this flood going to come. Now, don't you think these people were getting married? They still had their own little thing going on, talking about they fit to go do this, they fit to do this, build a house, whatever they had going on. But when it was time for that flood to come, did that stop the flood just because they had something going on? They fit to, if somebody say the flood was coming on a, a Wednesday, and they these people tell me, I got I'm getting married Saturday. I got a marriage, marriage happen on Saturday. You think they can say, well, how about y'all please stop? Don't let the flood come out. I gotta get married. Care about your marriage, he's gonna let it rain. Ain't gonna be no wedding on no Saturday if he could shut it down on Wednesday. So, so the will was for the people to, to start seeking him, submit themselves, and humble themselves so they can get on that ark. So, you think it, only, it was only eight people that were able to get on that ark? So, you know how many other wills out of all the people that was on the earth? How many people had their own little wills, their own little plans set up? You know, you could you could just imagine the people who say, I'm gonna do this tomorrow. Hey, I'm gonna holler at you next week. We're gonna set this up in a couple months. Hmm? Outside of the will of Abba. They, they they look, that didn't stop anything. They little plans and all little plans. If our plans is set up, if it's not according to his will, it ain't gonna stop what he has pleasure to do. I want us to understand that so we can get to the mindset that we start saying, what, what is your will for me at this day? What is your will for me today? What is your will for me at this second, at this minute? What, what is your desire for me to do? Not us just, uh, 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 I used to, I used to laugh. I used to think it was because I didn't know telling you some stuff when I was, a, when I was younger and people used to come to the church and say, you have somebody stand up to my, I, I prayed and I asked, I asked the father what to put on. Right? And I didn't be like, y'all ask the father what to put on. This was in my young, ignorant mind. Like, who for ask the father what to put on? You got all them clothes in there. That's my mind. You put on what you want to put on. Nah, he said, acknowledge him in what? All your ways. You don't know why he would have you put on something, uh, a, a, a certain attire. It could be in his will that. Uh, you may be uh, dressed like somebody else, and now this may spark a conversation or something. I don't know. But but my point is, we put the knowledge him in all our ways. That way, we can always be in his will. Don't just make a move. Which way you, 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 you get in our mind, you go the same way every day. You, you just got in your program. I'm going to go to, this is the way I go to work. It's the quickest way. Every day, you get, y'all, yeah, which way you want me to go to work? Because he may have you go another way for, for, for his will. But if we get in our mind that we already know certain things. Nah. We got to start training ourselves to acknowledge me everything. What would you have me do at this hour? At this minute? What? How do you want me to handle the situation? Because I want to be in your will. Hmm. Let's go to Deuteronomy 6. What a Messiah. Look, the Messiah said what? I say and do nothing unless what? Father tell me. That's why he was always in the will. Because he didn't, he, he, he wasn't thinking he knew what to do and what to say. He always said only what the Father told him to say and what the Father told him to do. So the first level is what this word say. What is this word telling us to do? How they're telling us to live our life. Then after that, the Ruach will, will begin to, to, to lead and to guide us. But if you, if you ain't even following the first level of the word, 
You don't even know is your spirit talking to you or not. You got to be obedient first. See, that's why it says the work is to first believe because he is the word. The first the first level is to believe on him. That's the work that you deny your own understanding and put your faith and trust in Yahshua. Can't know the father's will if you've been disobedient. You got people you have. Uh, and I ain't talking about nobody that was with us, even though we had situations like that. But I don't have plenty of people. Hey, uh, bro, I, I want to get married. You, you'll marry me, or even you, 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 you do this funeral for me. Like real talk, this, brother. Hey, you, you'll marry me, brother. This, this, this brother already in a marriage, but they, they ain't together. Tell me, you marry me, I, I, brother? Is this the will of God for your life? Yeah. How, how is he giving you this, and, and you being disobedient? You tell me, it's the will that, that, that you marry this individual. So the will of God is for you to marry this other lady or this man, and you already married. So now you're telling me the will is that God for to get you divorced, and then y'all will get married. It's, it's it, it, that's what I'm saying. The word is the first level. See, if you just go by the word, you'll know this is not the will for you to even be in this situation. So now the spirits can come talking to you, getting you in all these dreams, and you getting all this fake conf confirmation, thinking the y'all is talking to you. Remind me to put up a scripture uh, 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 in, in Jeremiah 28 about this false prophet who, who came with his foolishness. Because when you start believing, if once you get outside of his will and you got a, a, a lust, and it ain't just about marriage, it's about anything. it could be about the job, it could be about a decision you want to make. If it's outside of y'all's will, if you got a lust to do it, man, all type of confirmation to come to you. But it'll be false. And you will be, I believe it's on my heart that Yah, that Yah is leading me to do this. But you ain't lining nothing up with the word. That's why we got to always take stuff back to the word. To see if this, this is Yah's will. Will you have me to do this? Deuteronomy 6. Let's get to it. Boy. And tell them people, I ain't just a marriage preacher or a funeral guy. Don't just call me. If you just want to get married to Barrett, nah, we will be doing that will. Uh, Deuteronomy 6, uh, verse, we, we just going to get to it. Uh, verse, um, verse 1, just verse 1 and 2. For Statutes and judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whether ye go to possess it. That thou mayest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I commanded thee, thou and thy sons and, and thy sons' sons, all the days of thy life, and thy days shall be prolonged. Okay? Jump to verse 6. It says, And these words which I command thee this day shall be where? He said, These words shall be where they should be at? In your heart. He said the words he speaking, the words that he was speaking was the commandments, the law of the commandments, right? He said that shall be in your heart and that thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and, and when thou rivest up, okay? So, so he telling them, look, we, we supposed to be teaching this to our kids all the time. If not, you off. Supposed to be teaching them the word, which is his will, as kids, so they can grow up understanding the will. So now, when something comes in that's contrary to the will, 
it, it's not even a fight. They already know. No, nah, that, that, that's that's not. That can't be a Abba Yah. That, that cannot be according to the Spirit because that don't go with the will, according to His Word. But when we don't do this, we set them up for failure. That's why we thank the Messiah, hallelujah, for his grace and his mercy. Because all of us don't fail short of the glory. Uh, and don't go blaming your parents, talking about they ain't teach me this. You, 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 you know now. Hmm? Let's go to Proverbs 6.20. So this folk, he want these, these words in our heart. Some of this stuff we get ourselves into is because we, we don't have the word down in our heart. That's how those spirits, those wicked spirits can we, we even entertain some of that stuff. If this word was deep down in our heart, when those certain thoughts come to us, we'll automatically know to cast it down. You know, that's when people come do that little fake prophesying over me. And I already know. I'm like, man, that's a lie. It's a lie. The devil trying to get me to fall off. But you have people come to you saying what y'all said for you to do. And they be just as wrong as two left shoes. It's lying. You would think, but some of the people be coming just lying, prophesying, but I usually think they highest the cost of living. Just be lying. Proverbs 6, verse 20. It says, My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thy heart and tie them about thy neck. The neck. This is why he wanted to do this. Catch this right here. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou wakes, it shall talk with thee. So what's going to be do what's, what's going to be talking to you? The word. It say the word will talk with you. These commandments, these laws, they were taught because it's alive. It's a word. It's the word. So when we, we when we teaching the people, when we teaching our kids this, and when we got it in us, even when we sleep, this word is still going to work. When we wake up, it, it'll talk to us. We'll be in his will. Because it's his word. But if we're not bonding this thing, what it, what it says, if we're not bonding them, it said continually upon thy heart. Tie them upon thy neck. I mean, wrap yourself up in this word. You try to have that, that enemy try to bring you a nightmare in your sleep, huh? Or, 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 or try to bring you one of those little false lies in your sleep. The, the, the word will be fighting for you. Then you wake up, you, you had a dream, you won't be doubting. Oh, oh, was this it was a dream of y'all? Or oh, is it a dream? I don't know if y'all telling me this or not. No, the word will talk to you and tell you that wasn't a, that wasn't a, uh the spirit. This is what I would have for you to do. Cause he don't you know he know what thoughts come to you in our sleep, what dreams we have? Some of us don't make so many mistakes because we don't have a dream and we don't went to somebody. Well, I ain't never done this. Uh but I know I heard people say it. Uh, uh, I had a dream. Uh, they interpret a dream. They can really be in a, they really have a right mind to want to interpret a dream, right? They interpret it's the wrong thing. Now you go do it. Now, he says, it, it says, when thou awakens, it shall talk with thee. What is it? It's the word. The word can talk with you. Because the word is his will. We're going to see it and because he wants you to know the way. He don't want us to be foolish and not know his will. Because he wants us to please him. He has a desire for us to please him. He doesn't want us to be guessing, are you walking in the will or not? He made it plain for us what the will is. You don't want us fretting over, am I walking in the will or not the will? Because now, now, now you don't have no confidence. You, you can't be bold if you're doubting if you're in the will or not. Now you're second guessing. 
Nah, when you know you're in the will, you can be bold and confident to make a decision to move. When you realize, because because we understand that he don't put it. If I'm walking in the wood, I mean, he has gave me the desires of my heart. He has put into me what to do. So now I can operate. I can move without without doubting, without fearing, because I know I'm operating in the will because I'm keeping his word. So it doesn't matter what it sound like, what it look like, what anybody say. I'm operating according to, to the word. I'm keeping his word. I believe in his son. I'm walking according to the faith. So now let's get it done. We got confidence in what, what, I'm, what we're saying and what we're doing. That's how we're supposed to raise them up. Raise them up with the confidence and the boldness. Huh? He, what, did, did David have confidence and boldness when he, when he was standing before uh, 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 Goliath? Or was he a little timid? Or was he doubting? Or was he bold? Or was he confident? David was confident. He was bold. He already he he already had a relationship with him. Wasn't no doubt in, in uh, wavering in David about fighting Goliath. He went to one. Wasn't no fear in him. Let's show. Let's get to the problems. We gonna we gonna get back to that New Testament. I, Isaiah. 15, uh, Isaiah 5.13. I'm just going back because by the time we get the New Testament, I want us to understand that he, he gave them a word. He, he, he gave them instructions on how to live, showing them that, okay, if you live, if you keep this word, put it in your heart. Hallelujah. If you walk according to the word, the word going to talk with you. It's going to be with you when you sleep. You, we're supposed to grow up in this word, uh, become it, right? They, they already should have understood this. But through time, because of sin, we're going to see what happens. So by the time we get to the Messiah, the people don't know the will because they don't know the word. Isaiah 5, 13. Let me get that. Man. See. It says, therefore, my, my people are going into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. So it's so so why did the people go into captivity? Why why they went into captivity? It says because they have no knowledge. No knowledge of what? And this is talking about a physical a physical captivity. Okay? But you only went into went into a physical captivity because you already was in captivity according to the spirit. They already was walking according to sin. So now if you're already walking according to sin because you don't have no knowledge of what sin is, it's easy for you to be held in, in, in captivity according to your, your flesh. Jeremiah 6.16. So, so we see we got to have some knowledge. Right. Got to have some knowledge. But what's the knowledge? So going to captivity had nothing to do with no other nation being jealous or no other nation. Another people uh, just want to come harass you or put you into the captivity because you the chosen people or all this type of stuff. No, it's because you have no knowledge. I used to like to say, if you knew there was a, 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 a speed trap set up, you would never get no tickets. You would know how what speed to go. You would slow down. You know that police hide behind that tree up there with that with that radar on you? You would slow down. 
but you get a ticket, you violate the law because you didn't know he was by. You had no knowledge that they had a speed trap set up. Hmm? If you'd have had knowledge that, yo, the police up there, let me let me slow down. But first of all, even before you breaking the law, the, the Holy Spirit didn't even stop you from even going over the speed limit. And I'm saying that because we, we can't get in the mindset where the Holy Spirit is gonna stop you right before right right before sin comes. No, he don't even want you to have a desire to even get into it to sin. He wants us to stay in his will. <laughs> uh, Jeremiah 6, 16. Let me just get to a couple points. It says, thus says the Lord, stand ye of the ways and see and ask the old paths where is the good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we would not walk therein. Why did I come here? Why I'm coming here? Because look, we gonna it, it, he he. What happened? The, he was trying to explain to them. Look, seek the old way, seek the old paths. You gonna find rest for your souls. But no, they, they said what they said. We would not walk therein. Same thing going today. That's old stuff. I don't want to hear that. We 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 gonna walk in this new word. It's no new word. It's the same word. He was telling them get back to to get back to the word, get back to the law, statute, commandments, having faith in Yah. But the people said no, we not Zion. We cannot cut a new path. There's no building. Uh, uh, the foundation already been laid on how we should walk. We hear that a lot of times of the day. You try to tell people no, we got to go back to this, get back to this. It said at 17, wife said, said, let me read down. Also, I set watchmen over you, saying, hearken unto the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we would not hear. Uh, another word for the trumpet could be your voice. You, you talking to them. They say, we don't want to hear. Therefore, hear ye nations and know, O congregation, what is among them. O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts. Look at that. Even the fruit of their thoughts. Hmm? Because they have not hearkened unto my what? Words, nor my law, but what they done? They rejected it. See, he was trying to get them, man, listen to the word, because this is my will. Huh? Listen to it. They said no. They rejected it, so he rejected them. We're going to read that's in Hosea 6, too. We're going to see it. They, they didn't want to hearken, they want to come with a new thing. Jeremiah telling them, get back. Come on by. Get back to this old path. Some of, some of the elders try to tell you, don't do that. Do this. This is the way. I already been through that, what you've been through. I'm telling you, this is what you need to do. I, I know what you're feeling in your flesh. I know what your flesh want to do. Nah, but you need to do this. The elders will tell you, you need to do this. <laughs> I don't know I don't my elders. This is real talk. Pastor Mojo, one, one time, he did, he did, he did something. when I'm in my younger age, in my younger age, they're trying to tell me something. Man, I'm like, man, that's, that, that, look, I told, I say, and I was, air, I was in someone's air, Pastor Mojo laughed at me this day, but I said, look, it's a new type of individual right now, man. I told him, y'all, y'all talking about that old stuff. It, it's new what's going on right now. Man, they say, man, it's the same spirits that being around forever. You know? Nah, the, the devil, the devil, he's just he's doing the same thing. But me and my ignorance, nah, something new going on. They like, nah, bro, you crazy. But uh, who has something? I heard somebody wanted, somebody had something. Anybody Sorry, that something? was me. I Go was ahead, just please. listening to the um, the remark on the trumpet and how they were shutting Jeremiah down. It reminded me of uh, um, something that you were talking to us about um, the other day. And you said there were some sisters who uh, they got to the point they were like, "Don't even show us. Don't even go. And don't, don't even bring mm -hmm. it up." Because in the heart of our hearts, we know pretty much that it goes back to like you were saying those old paths. And a lot of people get to the point where even if you're trying to show them. 
but those paths are right back in the word, pulling them back into that word. They start, well, you can interpret it this way, mm -hmm. or you can actually look at it this way. And mm -hmm. you're like, well, according to the Hebrew, it's mm -hmm. this way. But no, I mean, we really got to go back to this is you, you're missing the point and it's supposed to be that and they don't yeah. want to do what the word says. so that just made me think of they can shut the trumpet down to the point where yeah we, we, we hallelujah you just broke up on us you went silent on us right there we ain't hear you i heard the last part but what you saying is the truth Man, he don't make this thing simple. You can go get the Hebrew, the Aramaic, the English, the, 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 the Mandarin. You can get the Ethiopian version, whatever you want to get. His word is his word. Because if you walk in according to the word, if you submit it unto the Father, if you ask for his Ruach, that's who's going to interpret to you what the word is. He's going to give you understanding because he wants you to know the way. So the only way to know the way is to know the will. Hmm? He want us to know. We're going to see it. And we're going to see the day, y'all will. If you don't know the will, you foolish. That's what the Bible says. So if you, if we start following people who don't know the will, you're following somebody that's foolish. Hmm? Jeremiah 9, 6. This is this. Uh, uh. Let me start at verse one because I want us to get the totality of this. It, it says, Oh, that my head were waters and my eyes foundation of tears, that I may uh, uh, weep day and, day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh, Oh, that I had in, in the wilderness a larger place of a wayfaring man that I may leave my people and go for them. For they all be adulterers as an assembly of tre treacherous men, and they bend their tongues like their bow for lies. Okay, but they are not, uh, how do you pronounce the word? Valiant. Valiant from for the truth upon the earth, but they proceed from evil to evil, and they know not me. Huh? They know not me, says the Lord. Take, take ye heed every one his neighbor, and trust ye not in thy brethren. For every brethren will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slanders. And they will deceive every one of his neighbor, and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. Hmm? We understand. We just read that. What is what is said in there? Um, keep your hand up. I didn't want to go over this, miss this point here. It said in verse 19, back in that Jeremiah uh, 6, 19, it says, hear, O earth. He's talking to Israel, too. A lot of times in the Bible, when you see heaven and earth, it's talking about Israel. But it says, hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts. Because they have not hearkened unto my words. So you understand when you go against his word, when you go against his 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 will, your thoughts are going to be evil. How you think when the word we get a New Testament, we say he's going to give you over to a what? A reprobate mind. A reprobate mind, you continually thinking evil. That's all you want to do. You can't get out of it. All on your mind is to transgress his word. Back at this Jeremiah 9, it says, and they will, I'm in verse 5, and they will deceive everyone his neighbor and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. You teach your tongue to speak lies? That's a training. That means you lie so much you can't even help yourself. Everything that come out your mouth is a lie. Remember one time Bishop David say, man, he, he knew people that, that lie so they, they lie so much, they'll lie with the truth for do. 
even when you can just tell the truth, they still lie. Somebody asked you, it could be uh, cold outside. The cold outside, nah, it's hot. They just lie to lie. Now that's bad. Even if you could just tell the truth, when the truth will do, you lie. That, that's what he's talking about right here. The truth will do, but you'll lie. Can't control yourself. Boy, trade is a bad. It says, they, they have taught their tongue to speak lies and wear themselves to commit iniquity. Verse 6 is why I came here. It says, thy habitation is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit, they refuse to know me, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, behold, I will melt them and try them for how should I do for the daughter of my people? So it say because of deceit, it says they refuse refuse to know me. Look, he, he want us to know him. He want us to know the truth. But because of deceit, because of sin, because of lies, you, not nobody here prayerfully, people refuse to know him because they refuse to follow the word. But keep this stuff in mind when we get to this New Testament. Because when they was rejecting the Messiah, they didn't understand. They were refusing to know who Abba was. They were actually refusing eternal life. This is why this journey of dedication of will is so important. Because if you don't know his will, you are refusing eternal life. When you refuse to know his will, you're saying, I know better. I want to go my way. So this, this, this understand, if they were doing the will of the Father, when the Messiah came on the scene, and we know he was teaching the will, he was teaching the doctrine, if they were doing the will, what would have happened? Everything just would have came together. They would have just been like, oh, this got to be word. This is the brother. This is the Messiah. He's the king. Hallelujah. But because they weren't doing the will, when he was doing the teaching, it wasn't lining up to them. Hmm? You know how some people, the scriptures say they like they got itchy ears. So what kind of message you think they want to hear? They want to hear a message of, of foolishness because their ears are itching. They got sin in them, so they don't want to hear the truth. They want something that's going to line up with their will, which is a lie. That's why the Messiah told the Pharisees, you believe me not because your devil, your father is the devil. He's a lie from the beginning. You can't hear my words. You don't want to hear the truth. You don't want to know the will. Because what's in you is not the truth, it's not the will. So what I'm saying to you is contrary. So you refuse to hear the word. What I said, Jer let's go to this Jeremiah 28 before we get to this New Testament. I want us to just see this really, really quick. Um, I, I'm going to read from verse 1 it says and it came to pass the same year in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah king of Judah in the fourth year in the fifth month that Hananiah the son of Uz, the prophet which was of Gibeon spoke unto me in the house of the Lord in the presence of the priests of all the people saying Thus speaketh the Lord of the host, the God of Israel, saying, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two full years will I bring again into this place all the vessels of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar king uh, of Babylon took away from this place and carried them to Babylon. And I will bring again to his place Jeconiah, the son of the, the Kohim, the, the king of Judah, with all the captivities of Judah that went into Babylon, says the Lord. For I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Then the prophet Jeremiah said unto the prophet Hananiah, in the presence of, of the priest and in the presence of all the people that stood in the house of the Lord, even the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. The Lord do so. The Lord perform thy words which thou have prophesied to bring again the vessel of the Lord's house and all that is carried away captive from Babylon into this place. Nevertheless, hear thou now this word that I speak 
in thy ears and in the ears of all the people, the prophets that I have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. The prophet which hath prophesied of peace when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord hath truly sent him. Then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke from off the prophet Jeremiah's neck and break it. And Hananiah spake in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus says the Lord, Even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, from the neck of all the nations within the space of two full years. And, he prophet, and, and the prophet Jeremiah went his way. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet. After that, Hananiah the prophet had broken the yoke from upon the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Go and tell Hananiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, Thou hast broken a yoke of what? Wood. But thou shalt make for thee yoke of iron. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all these nations, that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, that shall serve him, that I have given him the beasts of the field. Then said the prophet Jeremiah to Hananiah the prophet, Hear now, O Hananiah, the Lord have not sent thee, but thou makest this people to trust a what? A lie. Therefore thus says the Lord, Behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth this year that thou shalt die, because I hast taught rebellion against the Lord. So Hananiah the prophet died the same year in the seventh month. Okay? Re reason why I read that, when you get deep into the story, listen. First of all, the Messiah come to break a yoke from around. He come to take us out of sin, right? To get us from a yoke of bondage, right? It ain't, it ain't a, how can I put this, a, a, so much of a physical bondage first. He, he come to get us, to set us free uh, spiritually, right? But, but, but you have people, prophets, and all that type of stuff get you to thinking that this is, you, you go to thinking about a physical captivity, a, a physical bondage first. And you forgetting, people will forget that if you still locked up, a uh, 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 bound spiritually, even if you get in a new land, you still what? In bondage. You still in bondage. So this is not about uh, us getting unyoked out of this particular captivity per se right now. The, the time now is for us to get set free spiritually in the mind. That's his will. This is what they didn't understand. Even the disciples didn't understand that. That's when he came. They say, well, when are you going to give us a kingdom? When, when is the kingdom going to be set up? The Messiah is trying to tell, had to tell them, look, it's going to come in due time or whatever. But, but first, they didn't understand. First, I got to get you set free spiritually. Because you cannot do the will of Yah and bondage in the spirit. I mean, you know what I'm saying? If you, if you bound up with sin, you can't do the will. You can be in a physical captivity and still be doing the will of Yah if you set free spiritually. Daniel done it. Daniel was walking according to the will of Yah, but he still was in captivity. And Shatrach, Meshach, and that bad Negro. Well, again, let me stop saying that. Right? But all of them was doing the will of Yah in captivity. But they weren't in bondage spiritually. Because they were doing the will of Abba. So now when the Messiah come on the scene, when the Messiah come on the scene, he the people are so messed up in their mind, so messed up according to the spirit, so, so much in bondage, he trying to get them to know the will of Yah that he can set them free from sin so they can have everlasting life. But they was thinking about physical food, physical whatever they had going on. They just wanted to rule something. Being carnal. They weren't thinking about the will of Yah. The same thing going on today. Most people ain't stunned by it, satisfying Yah, doing his will, pleasing him. They just want to be on top of something, want to run something, hmm? want to beat something. Did I finish that? Yeah. So, so, so that, that's the only reason why I, I, I read that, because I want us to get an understanding that the will 
of Abba Yah first is to set us free from sin. Because how, how we just read the will was that all should re receive eternal life, the ones that come to him. How are you going to receive eternal life when you're still yoked up with, uh, with, with, with sin? Can you receive eternal life and you walk in sin? No. <laughs> Hallelujah. You cannot. So this word, this will, is to get us set free from sin first. And he wants us to know it. Let's go to Hosea 4, 6. And we're going to get to this New Testament. Hosea 4, 6. Ain't no secret what his will is. His will is his word. We're going to read it. And he wants us to know it. It says, my people, Hosea 4, 6, Hosea 4, 6. I'm going to read verse 1. I love verse 1 and verse 2. Boy, look here. It says, hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord had a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of, of God in the land. So who want to have a beef? Who, who want to be in controversy and, 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 and odds? With the Almighty. But he's saying, I got a problem. I got a it's controversy with the people. He's saying, no truth, there's no mercy, no knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. Therefore, shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish. With the beasts of the field, with the fowls of the heaven, and yet the fish of the sea shall all be taken away. Let no man strive, neither reprove another, for thy people are as they that strive with the priests. Therefore shall thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, because they have rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgot the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. So if you reject the knowledge, you reject the wisdom, that means he's trying to give it to us. That's what I want us to understand. He, he always was trying to get us to, to get knowledge, to get wisdom, to get understanding. He's always been trying to get us that. So we can know his words and we can walk according to his will because he don't even want to reject us. But what happened? You re uh, the ancestors rejected knowledge and they rejected the knowledge. They didn't want to be obedient. These ain't my words. This is what the Bible say. Hmm? So now it's a major problem in Israel. And, and, and not this Israel is in the world. The people don't reject the knowledge. There's no truth. There's no mercy. So this gives us to understand the hearts are messed up. So in order for us to know the will, which will be the way, which will be his word, we have to get these hearts clean. So what's the only way or, or the way, which is the only way that he, that the father What's the gift he gave us to get these hearts clean? What gift did he give us, the Father give us, to get these hearts clean so we can know his will? The word, which is the Messiah, and we're going to read it. Go to Galatians 4. Let's get to this New Testament. Let me pull it up. They ain't know the Messiah was coming to uh, 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 get their heart clean. They thought they was already clean. Because they had them little pretty little robes on. Mm -hmm. Thought they was straight. Get a Galatians 4. Oh, they should go on with that. 
Galatians 4. I'm going to read verse 1. It says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, different nothing from his servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we may receive the adoptions of what? Sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, there are no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then a heir of God through Christ. So, 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 so listen, he has sent the spirit of the son into our hearts. Why is he sending the spirit of Yahshua in our hearts? Because Yahshua, right, has already he, look, he's already walked this walk. He's already perfected the walk. He's already had, had pleased the Father by being obedient. Now he's going to send that same spirit in us so now we can submit unto his will and be obedient to the spirit. But first, the heart has to be right. Hmm? The heart first has to be, uh, uh, be perfected. This is why and the disciples, then, he took three of them up to the mountain. Remember he took three of them up to the mountain? Who was it? John, Peter, and uh, 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 well, Moses was there. It wasn't Moses. Moses was one of the people he showed. But the, the three disciples he took up, he took up John, Peter, and uh, with, can't think of another, was it Matthew or James? I forget. But, but anyhow, he, he took up three of the disciples up to the mountain, right? The mountain of transfiguration. And then they they, they had built uh, one, they, they built a, 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 a tabernacle for uh for Elijah and one for Moses, right? Then they built one for them. Uh, 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 they, they built one for Elijah, one for Moses. And, and what, what he told them, what, what when the angel spoke, what, what did the angel say? He he says, look, and they built one for the law and for the prophet. He said, this is my my son who I'm well pleased. This, he said, what? Hear him, hear him, listen to him. Not that the um, the prophets and Moses, the law is wrong, but at this time, I want y'all to hear him because he's going to come set stuff in order. See, so what happened when we read the law and we read the prophets, we're supposed to be reading it with the heart of the Messiah, with the mind of Hamashiach. So now we can get the full understanding of what the scriptures is saying to us. But if he's not in our heart, huh? If he's not in our heart, it, meaning your mind, when you go back and read this stuff, you're going to be read with your own understanding. You ain't going to know the will. You ain't going to know the way. So he he, he says he has uh, 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 put the son into our, our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Okay? It says, boy, verse 7. You need to highlight that one. God don't know it. Wherefore, there are no more servant but a son, and if a son, then a heir of God through Christ. You know what it means to be a heir to, uh, 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 of the Almighty? That means what, what the Messiah get and we're going to get. It, it, it's, it's a oneness. It's flowing down. We're receiving what he received. It, it's what we get in the kingdom. He, he, we get in the kingdom. We have an inheritance. But it says he has to be in us, on our hearts. All right, let's go to Ephesians 5. I don't want more on that. Yeah, let's go to Ephesians 5. Better get to it. Get to it. Get to it. Hallelujah. Uh, 17 is what I want, but I'm going to read verse 1 uh, through 3 just for uh, get a little context of what's going on. It says, Ephesians 5, Be therefore followers of God as dear children. Walk in love as Christ hath also loved us and have given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. But fornication 
and all uncleanness and covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor gesturing, which are not convenient, but rather giving thanks. Okay. For this know ye that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater have any inheritance of the kingdom of kingdom of, uh, of Christ and of God. The last verse we just, uh, when we was at the last scripture, it says you, you become a hair with him, right? So here it's letting us know if you're doing these things, are you going to be a hair with him? Because this is against his will. He left us uh, an example of how we should walk, right? He, he, he is the will. Right. He left us a perfect example. So if you walk in according, uh, if you walk in contrary to the way the Messiah walk, you're not walking in these things. You're not going to become no hair. Ain't no and ifs, buts about it. We can do it and say what we want to say. If the scripture is, 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 is plain. You can get one of these little kids. Ask them, hey, if you're doing this, will you get the kingdom of God? They're going to tell you no. But you know what somebody who's doing it going to say? Uh, he know my heart. I ain't mean to do it. I I'm a work in progress. I'm under construction. We're going to say all these little clever, little slick, little things. No, no, no. I'm doing it. I repent. I need to stop right now. I ask y'all sure to forgive me for my sins. I repent of this filthy, wickedness, wickedness stuff that I see that I'm doing because it's not the will of y'all. That's what a, a man or a woman of y'all uh, who really trying to walk according to the world going to say. We ain't going to make no excuses. We're going to say, hey, I don't want to do these things. This stuff is not going to get me in the kingdom. It's going against the will. He said, let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things come the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For man, let me finish. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and in truth. Huh? So, so it said it's telling you to walk in the light. What Psalms 197 say? What, what uh, Hold your hand right there. Let's go back. Let me go back here. Let's see. That's that script. That's the script. Uh, uh, there's a lamp until your feet. Let me, let me read 19.7. 19.7. Let's see. Yeah. That, no, that's the, watch this. is the one about, the, about, the, about, the, about, the, about the, what I said earlier. It says the law is perfect, converting the soul. Watch this. The testimony of the Lord is pure, making the wise simple. The, the statue of the Lord are, are right, rejoice in the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure, enlighten the eyes. Okay? So, so watch this. It says in verse 8, it says, The statues of the Lord are right, rejoicing in the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlighten the eyes. Right? The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. So, let me ask you this question. What it, if what does it mean? And anybody can answer. If not, we, we'll get to it. What does it mean that it would enlighten our eyes? It, you will be able to see. So 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 check this out. If if you if you breaking God's laws and statutes and commandments, right? Can you see? You can't see. It's 623, the light of the Lord is a lamp. Yeah, let me see that. It's Proverbs 623. That's the one I really want. But this, this deal with the enlightenment of the eyes, but if you're breaking his laws, standing the commandments, you ain't gonna be able to see. But Proverbs 623 is a little bit more clear. Let me see. Uh, We're gonna come back there. We're gonna get it all. Uh, yeah, that is it. It says for the commandment, hallelujah. It says for the commandment is a lamp and the law is a light and reproofs and instructions are the way of life. Okay. So, so here we go again. It says the commandments is a lamp. The law is a light and the reproofs 
of instructions are the way of life to keep thee from evil. <laughs> woman from the flattering of the tongue of a strange woman. OK, so so the commandments of the lamp and the law is a light. Right. So in other words, we walk in according to his law, sense commandments. First of all, we're going we're gonna to put out a scripture to prove this point. You, you must have your shoe in your heart. Right. Because the spirit, the, the law is spiritual. But if we walk in according by faith. Right. And we keep these laws, statutes, commandments, you're not going to fall. Because we're going to stumble and fall when we're walking in darkness, right? We're going to stumble and fall when we're walking in darkness. Let's go back to that. Uh, what was I at? Um, I was Ephesians, Ephesians 5, right? When the Messiah came on the scene, family, were they not keeping the law? And were, were they not keeping the law? Right? They had the law. They, they had the Torah. But the Messiah, as we, read, as we read earlier, the Messiah said, none of you keep it the law. He was trying to tell them, none of y'all are walking according to my spirit. Everything is out of cut work. It's not coming from the heart. You're not doing it to please me, to please Abba. You're not doing it. You're doing it for whatever other reason. Anything we do, it should be first to please him and to honor him. Verse 17, we, we get to the point. Uh, Ephesians 5, verse 17. It says, Wherefore, be not ye unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Right? If you look that word on wise, I was going to tell you that be not foolish. OK, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So right here, he's telling us we need to understand what the will of the Lord is. He said, wherefore, be not foolish or unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is and be not drunk with wine where in excess, but be filled with the spirit speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns. And spiritual songs, singing and making melodies in your heart to the Lord. So right here is letting us know he doesn't want us to be foolish. He doesn't want us to be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So if he's telling us he wants us to understand what the will is, that means it must be available for us to know what the will is. Because he's not going to be telling you he wants you to understand something and then it's not available for you. That will be setting us up for failure. And he doesn't set his children up for failure. He set us up for success. Hmm? Colossians 1. Let me slow down. Colossians 1. I'm going to read verse one and two for context. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy is our brother. To the, huh? oh. to, to the saints and faithful brother in Christ, which are Colossia, grace be unto you and peace from, our, from, from God, our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, jump down to verse nine. It says, Read verse eight. Uh, who also declared unto us your love in the spirit? For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, did not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye may be filled. Watch this: that ye may be filled with the knowledge of His will, in all wisdom, and in spiritual understanding. Okay, so guess what? It's letting us know. He said that we may be filled with the knowledge of his will and with all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So we, we understand if there's a spiritual understanding, there also is a what? A, a worldly or a fleshly understanding. But he doesn't want us to be filled with worldly or fleshly understanding. He wants us to be filled with what? Spiritual understanding. Because we feel with spiritual understanding, 
we're going to have the understanding of his will. What you say? Spiritual knowledge. They was rejecting the knowledge. And it's simple. It's nothing deep about it. It's his word. We make it so deep. But we're going to see when it get deep, though. We're going to read how deep it is. Because it do get deep, but that ain't even that deep. Hmm. We, we got to be confident and bold and, 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 and submit ourselves to y'all that his word is available for us. If we trust and put faith in his word and walk according to his word, we will be doing his will. You only not doing his will when you walk in contrary to his will. So to walk in his will is to walk according to the spirit. And if you walk according to the spirit, that means you're not walking in sin. The only way we're not walking according to the spirit is when you're walking according to your flesh. When you're walking according to your flesh, that means you are transgressing the law. So when, when we say we're in the spirit, we walk according to the spirit, that means we're being obedient unto his word. But remember, let me say this. It comes, it, 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 it has something to do with our heart, though. Our heart got to be right, Zion. We have to be right in the inside to be walking according to his will. He said that we be filled with the knowledge of his will. Why does he want us to be filled with the knowledge of his will? Because if we feel with the knowledge of his will, we're going to know what to do and how to do it and when to do it. We read earlier over there says he, he gonna give it, he said his thoughts he, his pleasures will be uh, will be done on the earth he he gonna his will will be performed so if we walk in according to his will and he give us a full knowledge of his will we're gonna be on one accord with what he's doing in the earth at this time that way when all hell break loose he gonna be telling his saints. What, what to do and how to do it, where to go. We ain't going to be in uh, in limbo. Uh, he, he ain't going to be coming to us like in a thief of the night. We're we going to be prepared. Not saying we're going to know the exact day, exact time and hour. No man know that. But we will, we will be prepared. You ain't going to be caught off guard. Back to Noah. When Noah built that ark, they didn't build it in a day, but he was prepared when that rain came, wasn't he? Okay, it started raining. Time to go inside. Work, work time over with. Ain't no more working. It's over. Let's go inside. It's going to be the same way. Let me finish reading this. Uh, 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 verse 10. That, that ye may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing the knowledge of God. See, we walk in according to his will, he's going to increase his knowledge. Hmm? He's going to give us more knowledge and we're going to be fruitful. It says, uh, 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 strengthen with all might according to the glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father uh, uh, which have made us meet to be partakers in the inheritance of the saints in light who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins who is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of every creature hmm? listen we're being transformed and conformed in the image of Hamashiach. So if we've been transformed into that same image and he's the image of his father and his father has the word. I mean, he's given us the same mind as they have. We're going to all be on one accord. He's going to be letting us know what's going on. But we're going to have to submit ourselves. Remember the work. We read this, but remember, don't forget the work is to first believe on the Messiah. And that's some type of work. Because you can say you believe all you want, but are you doing what the word said to do? Hmm? 
Let's go to Colossians 4.12. Hallelujah. Uh, I just get to this point. A Apparatus, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, salute you always, laboring fervently for you in prayers that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. See, this goes back to that uh, uh, the law being perfect, converting your soul. Right here is letting us know that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. See, we understand. Y'all has a will that that's that that ain't nothing you can do to change. He has a will that he's gonna that's already in play. It's gonna it's gonna do what it's gonna do. But man also has a will. Individually, all of us have our own little will. Hmm? All of us have our own little will, but he has a will that, that's in place that's that's gonna happen. No matter what we got going on, as we read earlier, but the game plan is that we are willing to <laughs> give up our will in order to submit his will so we could be on one accord with him. One thing he's not going to do is go against your will. He's going to let you do what you want to do. And if your will don't line up with his will, you're going to get willed over, a rolled over. <laughs> Listen, our job, hmm? It's to submit unto him. Hmm? What the Messiah said, not my will, but let your what? Let your will be done. Let us know he had a will. We got a will too. But which will do you want to be on one accord with? Your own will or the Father's will? You want to be on one accord with his word, his will. That's how we can be complete and walking in perfection. Because we walk in his will, guess what? The, 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 uh, the son, the Messiah is in us, cleaning us up daily. Because the more we walk according to his word, the more we walk according to his will, the more we die in the flesh and the more we're being cleansed. Huh? Daily. The more we're being perfected. He's converting us. Transforming us, renewing our mind daily. What that Romans 12, 1 through 2 say. But you got to make yourself a what? A living sacrifice. You got to be willing to die to yourself daily that you will submit unto the will of Abba Yah. Ephesians 1. We want to walk in the perfect will of Yah. All we got to do is stick to this word. Don't do and say nothing unless, unless this word tell you to do it. Uh, first of all, if it's written, do that. But then when we get to the point where he's because the word is still talking, we read earlier, we say the word will talk to you. So if the word tell you, the word will tell you, hey, don't even go to work today. Just lay in your bed, chill. Uh, I, lay, uh, I need you to pray to me all day. Or say the word tell you to, to go on a fast or something like that. Like, like, let me give you an example. I'm going to give you the perfect example. Two things. One, you know, a church, brother Troy say, hey, we're going to go on fast this day. I said, Lord, I believe brother walk according to the will. So let's get it on. Let's get it. Let's go on a fast. Be, in, be on one accord to get in the will. You with me? Now, now think about this. This is this, your this humble. How can I cannot say this? Let me, let me give you an example. We're going to come back to that because I, I want us to understand something first. But, but I do want us to. The, we have this written word. Right. And then we have we have we have the, the, the logos, we have the rhema, which is written word. We got when the spirit taught us that when the, when the spirit taught to your heart is never going to go against what's written. OK. And the reason why I'm saying that, because if you ever second guessing what the will is, it's this line, whatever thought you have up with the word. And if it's going against what he has written, you know what you're hearing ain't his will. He's never going to go against his own will. Never. He doesn't want us. He doesn't even want us in a tug of war or trying to, oh, what should I do? No, it's clear. It's plain. It's simple. He don't want that word. He don't want that word when you worrying or being stressed out. Oh, what should I do? How should I do it? No. 
And, and, yeah, and if, guess what? And if you don't know, you be still. But you, until then, you seek his word out. You just got to get his word down in us and his will begin to talk to us. His word begin to transform us. And then we'll be we just, just start walking in it. Said Ephesians 1. Because see, it, 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 see, sometimes your, your flesh will get in the way. And, 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 and this is why we all got to be on one accord because you, you can be uh, you can be in your flesh sometimes and then the, the, the will of God is saying do, do, do one thing but your flesh wants you to do another thing. But if you got a brother and sister, this is why it's so important to surround yourself with godly counsel. Because if you off, if your brother and sister in godly counsel and they're hearing the will of Yah, they can talk to you and then, you know what I'm saying, you will still be able to walk in the will of Yah. You understand what I'm saying? You, you still better get some reproof and correction. But if you got yourself surrounded around a bunch of nuts, or, or oh, I'm trying to stop saying that word nuts, or people who not walking according to the will, they're going to give you the wrong information. And, and sometimes you can just be in fear of a situation. You remember that one time we was uh, at that tabernacle and that hurricane was coming. I think it was about, about, about three years ago. The hurricane was coming here. We was out there. It was raining real bad. Uh, I'm telling you, it was storming. Not this last time, but it was storming. And I'm in that tent and that flesh telling me, man, we got to get out here. You got these people out here. You're responsible for them. They just run all these trees. They got to go. Right. But me, I say, you know what? I pray. I say, y'all, let, let me. Uh, uh, what would you have me to do? Right. So I went to Brother Troy. Hey, Troy, man, tell me the situation, man. That's how I heard say the hurricane might be coming a couple of days, blah, 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 the rain, storm, whatever. So what we do, we take it to everybody. Look, next thing you know, everybody agreed. Some of the sisters said, I think we should just stay. Y y y all got us. Man, that ended up being a, a, a beautiful Remember afterwards. The days were so beautiful after that. It ended up being just a, a, a beautiful time. The, the reason why I'm saying that is because Sometimes you could be uh, 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 dealing with your own flesh, walking according to the fear. So at this point, if you understand that, don't just think like, oh, I got it. I'm in this position. I can do this. No, this, this is when you consult. You, you bring the brothers, the, the counsel together, and you try to get wisdom and knowledge on how to deal with a situation. And that goes for everybody. But if you're sitting in the seat of the scornful and the seat of the wicked, you're going to get some what? Some bad counsel. If we all trying to walk according to his word, according to his will, and we submitting ourselves, man, it, it, it is no way we're going to fall. But if you get that big head and you go to thinking, anybody would think, I got it. Brother or sister, elder don't told you to chill out. Don't do that. That's not the will of y'all. But because you feel into your flesh, you're going to find out later. Hmm. Let's get to it. Ephesians 1, uh, 1 through 11. Let me read the whole thing. You must, that's why you say you got to know them that labor among you. I don't know about the wrong knee. Let's go on. Um, Uh, I'm just going to run it. Ephesians 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faith of Christ in, in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of the children by jesus christ to himself according to the good pleasures of his will right we read earlier that he his pleasure of his will is going to be done that's what we read earlier in Isaiah uh, 46.10. 
And it's let us know here that having predestinated us unto the adoption of the children by Jesus Christ to himself. So now we sons, we heirs, right? According to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the rich, rich, rich the riches of his grace, wherein he has abounded toward us all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his what? Of his will. According to the good pleasure which he had purposed in himself. So the, we read earlier, the Messiah has now, the, the same spirit has came in our heart and the Messiah are to say him and the Father is one, he and the Father. Now that is letting us know what? If we walk in the Messiah, that means the will is going to be revealed to us. We're going to see who is a mystery to though. We're going to see who is a mystery to. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together and want all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. See, all this stuff is about his will. He's gonna, he got a perfect plan already set up. We gotta understand the plan of salvation. He's working a whole plan. Right. And it's all going to come to to, to uh, uh, it's all going to be revealed. The thing is, we want to make sure that we're part of that plan, that we in that we in his perfect will, that we walk in according to the will uh, uh, of his pleasure, because his pleasure is not for us to go to hell. His pleasure is for us to be in the kingdom. But some people are going to be on the other side of it. We want to make sure we working that we're working, uh, working with him because we're being obedient. Right. It says, after the counsel of his own will. The counsel is his thoughts. Huh? He has already thought things and put it into words and now it's in action. His word is at work here. But is the word working in you to perform his will? See, all we got to do is be obedient and the word going to do the work in us. The word is going to fulfill the will of the father because the word already knows what the father will is. The Messiah, if he's in you, he already know what the will of the father is. So now we have to submit unto uh, Yahshua, ask him, what is it that I, will, what is it that I can do to please the father? Because the Messiah already pleased him. And he's the only one that can please him because he's the only one that did not commit sin. Because the father can't accept no sin. So now we got to put our trust, our faith in him. And now we trust in the work that the Messiah did and be obedient to his work, huh? which is the father's will, which is the father's work. And now he's going to work. He's going to work the will out in us. He's going to lead and guide us on what to do, how to do it, how to be obedient so we can please the father by faith. This is what's going on. huh? The, 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 the work, we, if we believe on the Messiah, Put our faith, our trust in him. Now he is in us. So now he, he understands by where the spirit, what, what work it is that the father is doing and what's going to please him. Right. So now we'll be obedient to the spirit. Huh? Now, guess what? It's the Messiah working this thing out in us. And it's not this type of mindset that I hear people say that you ain't got to do nothing. Just put your faith and trust in Messiah. And then they over there doing all this, breaking the laws and commandments, doing all this sinning. Talking about the work gonna get done. No, you have to be at work with him. You have to submit yourself and die to this flesh, be obedient to this word. Then the then through obedience, the work is gonna work according to the will of Abba Yah. Hmm? This, this is what's going on. It, the work is gonna get done, his will will get performed if the son is in you and you're obedient to the word. It, it's gonna get done. You ain't got to worry about the work getting done if you're being obedient. We just got to be obedient and submit and walk in love. And Yahshua is going to be walking in us, uh, pleading the Father. That's why we can't never get the big head and think we get a piece of the pie, get no glory, because it's him that's doing the work in us. That's pleasing unto the Father. Because hmm? he knows what the Father desires. That we should be the praise, 
that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ. Hmm? Can, so let me, can we do this work if we don't put our trust in the Messiah? Can we do the will of Yah without, without trusting in the Messiah? No, sir. If, if whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believe, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise uh, of his glory. Okay, uh, 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 let, let's go to uh, 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians uh, 4. So, 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 so check this out, Zion. I'll ask this question. Before we can get that. See, remember we read early where the people that came to Messiah and they they, they wanted that that, that that bread or something. They, they, he said, You ain't coming to me because of the miracles, you came to me because you want to be filled, right? What, what is what is I ask this question, and you can answer this question within yourself. How valuable is the gospel unto you? How valuable is the word unto you? Just ask yourself that. How valuable, huh? How valuable is the word to you? Hmm? A ask yourself that. It is the word more valuable? Is the word more valuable than anything on this earth to you? Because because Job said, and that Job 23:17, what Job said, Job said that uh uh it, it, it said that the word or the law is, 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 is I seek it is more precious than food. Hold on. They don't need to misquote it. Let me go down to Job 23. Hold on. We're going to come back. I just want to read this. I know in the Proverbs it says it's more than silver and gold. I like what Job said, though. Page stick. Let me put it up. I think it's Job 23. Hold on here. I need it. Hold on. Hold on. Mm -mm. It ain't twenty three seventeen. Hold on. Hold on. It's in Job. Is it seventeen twenty three? It's in Job. The script that say he. It says the word is more precious than food. Hold on. Hold on. Is it Job uh, twenty three twelve? It says oh, neither have I gone back from the commandments of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Hallelujah, brother. Hallelujah. 2012. That's what it is. He said, neither have I, thank you, brother. He said, neither uh, have I gone back from the commandment of his lips, right? This is his words. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than the necess necessary of food, meaning he put the word, it is more important to him than eating. That, that's what you, this, your, your food is necessary for, for your life. So he's saying the word is more important than his own life. That's how that's how much he valued the word. Another, another brother says it's, it's more than uh, silver and gold. He, he put it above choice gold. Go, gold is, is giving you an understanding of wealth. So the word is more valuable than wealth, is more valuable than life. So we must understand to do the will, to do the word, it has to be more than more than our own life. We got to have a heart uh, to, to have a heart to want to delight to do his word, to do his will more than it is to please our own life. Who is the perfect example of the Messiah? It was more pleasing to him to do the will of the father than his own life. He laid down his own life in order to do the will of the father. And that's what we got to get to. But we want to get to that point when we understand how precious the lamb is. Because it's the lamb that's revealed the father unto us. So if you don't understand who Yahshua is, we ain't got no revelation of who he is, and you could think you're going to die for the Father. You're going to die for the Father. You don't even know him. The Messiah has revealed to us who the Father is. That's why the Messiah said, you keep my sins. You, you love me if you can keep my sins. So is the word worth more to you than food. That's why I used to try to put that 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 uh 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 the, the thing in the table with my kids it had a little bucket where you used to put the, the whole bunch of scriptures in before we eat uh pick out a scripture and read that 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 read the scripture first before you eat your food. 
So you can get in your mind the understanding that this word before come before you even want to eat. It's more than life because the word is our life. Hallelujah. Um, where I left it? Where, where, where was going? Where was it? First Thessalonians 4. Let's start at verse, uh, verse 1. It says, Furthermore, then we beseech you, I'm begging you, brethren, and exalt you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us, how ye are to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God. He said, this is the will of God. Even your sanctification that ye should abstain from fornication. Right? That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel and sanctification and honor. So, so part of the will of God is for you to set yourself apart. Hmm? To abstain from lust, from fornication. Hmm? It's, it says that no man, it said, but then, let me read verse five. Not in the lust of, con, con, how you pronounce that? Con, concupiscence, thank you. Even as the Gentiles which know not God. So once you don't came into the knowledge of the will of Yah, you, you be full of knowledge, you walk in course of the spirit. You can't walk like the Gentiles that don't know him. In other words, how we saying we, we, we've been transformed, we walk in according to the spirit, and then we doing the same thing the heathens would do. And the heathens can be uh, Israelite too, by the way. I was going to say that for the record. You, you can't be walking according to somebody who are uh, walking according to the flesh and you probably got the spirit. Why? Because we know the will. We supposed to be walking in the will of Yah, the will of Yah. So it's going to look totally different than somebody that's walking like a heathen. Can't be saying we walking and we doing the will, but then you, you we walking like the heathens walk. We doing what they do, talking how they talk, dressing how they dress. I, let me finish reading this. It says that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter because the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also have forewarned you and, and testified. But we can't be lying to one each other, deceiving one another, tricking one another. That ain't a part of the will. For God have not called us into uncleanness, but have, but into holiness. He therefore that despised is despised not man, but God. He, he has all, he has also, sorry, but but God who had also given us His Holy Spirit. See, He He's given us His divine nature. Another scripture said, we go to the. It, it talks about He given His divine nature, and, and His divine nature will automatically have us walking according His to His divine will. But you can't be walking according to the divine nature and doing your thing in the flesh. Don't work one or the other. You decide. He, therefore, that despises, despises not man, but God, who has also given unto us his Holy Spirit. But, but as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed, ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more, and that ye study to be quiet, and that ye do your own business, and to work with your own hands, as we command you, that ye may walk honestly and toward them that are without, and that ye may have like of nothing. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brother, concerning them which are asleep. Ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. He, he doesn't want us in this, that particular mindset. Let's go to 1 Peter 3. I'm, I'm going to start at verse um, uh, 
man, you, you know what scripture I wanted to pull? Um, it, it's, it's a script that talk about, uh, where is it? It, it? it says that uh, eyes haven't seen, I know it's Isaiah 64, 4, but it's a scripture in the New Testament. Somebody can pull it, I'll tell me where exactly I want to read it. It's a scripture that's talking about eyes have not seen, ears not have, have not heard, uh, uh, according to the plan that he that he has for us. Um, what is the scripture? The Old Testament version is Isaiah uh, 64, but I don't want that one. It's one in the New Testament. I think it's in First Corinthians. First Corinthians two nine. Okay, hallelujah. Okay. Thank you. Let, let, let's read this real quick before we get done. I want us to see this. First Corinthians 2 9. First Corinthians 2 9. Okay. It, it says, um, um, let me start at verse uh I'm gonna start at verse verse ver, ver four. It says, um, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the prince of this world that cometh to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear have heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the thing which God had prepared for them that love him. But God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. Remember we said earlier that he sent his son's spirit into our heart, right? He revealed it unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yet the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the thing of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us, which things also we speak not in the words which uh, man wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself judges no man. For who have known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Hmm? Let me read. No man. Yeah, let me read that again. Verse fifteen. But he that is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is judge of no man. For who have known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So this is why I was saying earlier. If you have, if the Spirit come in your heart. You, you get the mind of Christ. We know Hamashiach done the will of the Father. So now that same spirit is in us, in our heart, meaning your mind. So now we're going to automatically walk. If we be obedient and submit to the will, we're going to be doing the will of Yah. Because we're going to be walking according to the same spirit that, that the Messiah had, which was the Father's spirit. Hmm? But 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 this is only for us that, that have the spirit in our heart. Hmm? The ones that sleep, the ones that don't have a spirit, they can't understand the things of the spirit according to the book. And the law is spiritual. So if they don't have the, the Ruach, if they don't have the Messiah, if they don't believe in the Messiah, according as the scriptures written, they're not going to understand the law, not going to understand the prophets, and not going to be walking according to his will. It's simple. But if we ain't careful, you'll let some... You'll let some individual twist you up with a whole bunch of uh, uh, pretty nice words, a whole bunch of uh, little, little, little fake history, a whole bunch of little stuff that sound good, and now you don't left the whole Bible because of some man's wisdom, uh, a man's understanding. He made this thing simple for us. 
is be obedient, have faith in the Messiah, keep these laws, statutes, and commandments. And, and the Ruach, the Messiah in your heart, going to lead you to walk in the will. He's going to give us a mystery of the Father's will. And that's all we want to do is please the Father by doing his will. It's that simple. Let's go by uh, 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 First Thessalonians. Well, that, where was it? No, First Peter three. That's where I was at. First Peter three. Um, where I started at? All right, First Peter three. Yeah, I ain't started. Uh, we gonna we gonna get to uh. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I'm going to read verse, verse 1 and 3 because verse 3 is a, one of my uh, beautiful scriptures. It's for the sisters. Hallelujah. For the coaches. It says, let me read verse 1 because I remember I used to read, I read this scripture back in the day and I get that look. Especially when you read that Ephesians 5 but you get that look. It says submit yourself one to another. Let's get that. We submit ourselves to our Yah. Let's get it. It says, likewise, you wives, be subjected to your own husbands, that if if any obey not the word, they also may be without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chastity conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning, let it not be with the outward adorning of the pattern of the hair and of wearing of gold or putting on apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart. And, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is the sight of God, a great price. OK, so it, it, it lets you know a woman can have the hidden man of the heart. Right? This is a Messiah who came in, those sisters, and he going to do the work. But we still, still got to be obedient and say what he say, do what he do. Right. But the reason why I wanted to come here is verse 14. Um, It says, but. Yeah, we'll get it down. Verse 14. But if ye would suffer, because what stops us a lot of times from walking in the will of y'all is the suffering. Huh? You a lot of us know what to do right, but we understand the price that it's gonna cost the, the, the be obedient. So some of us say this go back to loving yourself more than you love the word. I ain't fit to do that because I want to stand my flesh. Hmm? It's gonna you're gonna have to suffer to do this will. Watch this, though. It says, but if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of the terror, neither be troubled, but sanctify the Lord God in your what? In your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of hope that is in you with the meekness and fear, having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you, as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. Look, man, if we walk this word out and walk holy, they'll be ashamed to speak uh, speak uh, falsely against us. Hmm? Be ashamed of it. It says, for it is better if the will of God be so. Hmm? For, it, for it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil doing. So when we suffer, it is better for the will of God. Hmm? The, the will of God, if we walk in according to, to righteousness and holiness, suffering going to come, right? But watch, it says, but it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evil. So it's letting us know the will of God is for us to walk in obedience. So it's better to do the will of God, go ahead and suffer, than to not be obedient and do the will of God, and then you walk in evilness. You, you still, still going to suffer. Either way, you're going to suffer. But just for a little while, you got your little attitude off. You said what you had to say. And you gave me what's on your mind so you feel you feel a little better. Huh? Then you end that crying. Oh, y'all forgive me. I didn't mean to let repent. Now you got to go do all that apologizing. All that I'm a sorry and all this type of stuff. Man, go ahead and do what you got to do the first time. Get it right. Hallelujah. Let's read. For Christ also has one, it's letting us know. It says, For Christ also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Watch this, that he might bring us to God, 
being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit, by which also he went and preached into the spirits in prison. Okay. We're going to go to, uh, I'll finish reading. Uh, by which he, uh, what, by which also he went into the preach into the spirits in prison, which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while while the ark was a preparing, wherein a few that is eight souls were saved by water. Okay, so 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 check it out. And we're gonna finish it up in First Peter four. We're gonna read down First Peter four. That'll be it. But look, I got a question. So. He he says, is this the one right here? Well, he kind of not slight. Where is that at? Before I even say that. Hold on here. I think it, what do you say? I want to show that will. It's for uh uh he said count it uh not again, Zion. He count it, count it not, God is not slight. He he wants no man to suffer. He 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 he's he, he doesn't say that. Let me calm down. Think about two different scriptures. It says, God, God is not slight concerning his promises, okay? But he uh, is long-suffering. He don't want none to perish. Is that 2 Peter 2, 9? Hold on here. I want to, 3, 9? Let me read this real quick. We're going to come back. Let me calm down because something just came to me. Hallelujah. Let, let's read this. Cause this goes, this right here gonna go with what we read earlier, but when the Messiah said uh, he, he want he wants to come to him, he, he don't want to, he ain't gonna lose nothing. He, he wants to come, he come that we, the, the will of the Father, the will of the Father is that we get everlasting life. The Father doesn't want nobody to perish. His will is that we get everlasting life. That's the will of the Father, that we get ever that that that, that, that we get everlasting life. That's why he sent his son here. That if we believe on the son, we can get everlasting life. He didn't just sent his son just so his son can die. He sent him that, that he can die, destroy the work for the devil, and that we can believe on him that we can get everlasting life. This is the will of the Father, that we may have everlasting life. That's what he wants for us. He wants us to understand that, that that's his will. Hmm? He's doing all this that we can get everlasting life, but but guess what? It's on you. You're gonna have to trust and believe and die to your flesh. The Messiah ain't done what he had to do. We're gonna have to believe on him. But it's available for us. The will of the Father that we read earlier said that we that we that we may have everlasting life. This is the whole totality of everything. Look how much he love us. So what you said three. What you said nine. Second Peter three nine. It says, um, "I'm gonna read verse eight. Boy, <laughs> Hallelujah! Let me see it, man. Let me. Yeah, I'm gonna start at seven. But the heavens and the earth, which now." By the same word kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment, the perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord of a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slight concerning his promise, as some count slightness. But the promise is everlasting life, right? But but he says, but 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 long suffering toward us. Uh Long suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, and 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 the and the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are in shall be burnt. So so listen. Uh, in, in other words, the, 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 he doesn't want nobody to perish. He, he put everything in play. It's on us to put our trust in the Messiah, our faith in him, believe on the Son, so you can get everlasting life, be obedient to his word. If not, the lake you're going to go in. Simple as that. But it ain't his will that we go to hell and live, and live in eternal fire. His will is that we have 
everlasting life. He just chose Israel to, to be one of the, uh, the, the tool, one of the tools that he used to spread this gospel so all nations have opportunity to get everlasting life. That's how in, in Abraham, all the families of the earth shall be blessed because uh, through faith of Abraham, guess what? It, 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 it's just the, the, the seed came and the seed will be able to give uh, uh, everlasting life according to the spirit dealing with the Messiah. All the, all the families of the earth are blessed because they have opportunity to get salvation. But will everybody receive it? Everybody will have an opportunity. Hmm? We want us to understand this. Look, when we doing all that little crazy little sin and walking in that flesh, going according to the will of y'all, man, he is long suffering with us because he don't want you to die in your sin. He giving us time to repent, to get it right, to get back in the will of y'all. Just, just think of that. He could have destroyed Israel. He, he was going to do it uh, with Moses. He told Moses not for to get rid of all of them and make me a new nation with you. But Moses like, nah, then what, what everybody going to say about you? So because Israel should, we should have been destroyed. Now we want to look at these other nations and say, kill them, get them out the face of the earth, the face of the earth. All this stuff we read, we, we was doing. But guess what? His will is that he, he want to give us eternal life. Hmm? He doesn't want us to be destroyed. And we got to have that same mind, that same heart. We shouldn't want nobody to go to hell. You shouldn't want nobody to go to hell. We're going to close it out with this first Peter 4. She didn't want no, if you got a, the desire to want people to go to hell, man, you on your way to hell. Somebody got they, a desire, send them to hell, burn them up. Yeah, you're going to get burned up with that mindset because it ain't the mind, of, <laughs> it ain't the mind of he laughing. It ain't the mind of the, uh, 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 the, the father. You, you, what, what, remember them boys, them brothers tried to, uh, they say, call down, found them. Remember they, uh, they, they they was walking and they wanted to call down found them. People on the side said, that ain't, that ain't what I want y'all to do. You want somebody to call down found you right now? Boy, look, we have a lot to get right in our hearts. If I can go back even when I was a little child, and boy, we were about to get a whoop, we'll be about to get a whoop, and let's say I don't, we don't, I don't been good for the day. One of my cousins, brothers, for to get a whooping. My aunt or my mama tell me, hey, go out there and get me a switch. Or my grandma say, go out there and get me a switch. Man, we go out there, we looking for the biggest switch we can find because they finna get beat. Right? You ain't finna, if you gotta go look for your own switch, you're gonna get one of them little things, that thing will break on the first whip. But when your brother, when my brother's about to get a whooping, man, they'll tell me, go get, it, uh, go get a switch. I'll be out there laughing, trying to find the biggest switch I can find. That, you know how crazy that it is? And then you go back in there and you just sit and tear them up. What type of mind is that? I should have been like, man, brother, forget a woman. You don't been disobedient. Y'all have mercy on her. Mama, don't whoop him. I ain't never said that. We used to be trying to, uh, I wish Tony was on her. Boy, we would be getting that whooping and my auntie would be sitting in that chair because she's a heavy set. She couldn't really move like that. So, boy, she'll have to, she'll be like, come here. And you don't want to come. So, man, the other kids be trying to push the, the kid to her. Get hey, hey, I'm here, man. I hear you. Hey, <laughs> oh, yeah, <I'm> here. <laughs> hey, you know what I'm talking about. It's a true story. We were there trying to push. I was trying to push my, my, my cousins to go get her. And boy, she was still in that couch and get that switch. And, bah! and we just be left. You know how crazy that is? You want your brother to get beat? You ain't talking to him when you see him doing the sin. You see him messing up. We ain't talking to him, bro. Don't do that, man. You're going to get in trouble. And guess what? Sometimes you be on doing the same thing, but you just ain't get caught. It's stuff like that we, we got to repent for, we don't think about. You know how many times I don't skip school? I ain't get caught, but my cousin Tori got caught. Man, he get tore out the frame. And I'm in there laughing at him. Because he got caught, but I done the same as I think, but I got away. Shh. 
See, that's why we got to humble ourselves because there's a lot of stuff we don't got away with, a thought we don't got away with. And we see other people getting uh, 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 chastised for it. And we, we, we ooh and on a laughing at them. But, but guess what? You don't done the same thing. A thought to do the same thing, but you just didn't get caught. You weren't always doing the will of y'all. I'm, I'm saying this so we can get an understanding of what type of heart we need to have. A lot of people doing stuff in their ignorance. And some people doing it because they just they just wicked. But understanding the mindset should be we should be praying for one another that that uh, uh, that we all walk according to the will of y'all. Not that not that we getting uh, uh, chest tied. The boy, I used to hide them belts. I know I don't got mama for tell me up. I try to hide that belt quick. But anyways, let's get back to this word. Uh, First Peter 4, it says, verse 1, For as much then as Christ have suffered for us in the flesh, watch this, For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. He said the same mind he had when he suffered in the flesh, get your mind the same way. Arm yourself with the same mind. For he has suffered in the flesh, have what? Cease from sin. Is this simple or not? You ain't gotta, you ain't gotta look nothing up. You ain't gotta uh oh, let me pray and see what let me fast 10 days. This simple. You know a sin is transgressing the law or anything you do that's not by faith. Some people get to the point where I'm keeping the law, but all you doing what he tell you to do when the spirit tell you to go left, are you going left? If you're going right, you sinning right then. Because sin is also anything you do that's not by faith. And when you're suffering, you're going to cease from it. Huh? All of ourselves with this same mind. It's going to cost us to do the will of Yah. In this flesh, because the flesh, the, the flesh and the elements, this word that we in, everything is against us that wants us to do contrary to his word, contrary to his will. Because if we doing contrary to his word, if we if we doing what his word say, you become a light, you become a, be a beacon of light in this earth when you're doing what the will of, what, what the will of y'all say. You become a stand in the earth. The enemy don't want that. The enemy don't want you to uh, become a light and a beacon. It says that that he no longer should live the rest of the time in the flesh to lust uh, the lust of men, but to what? But, do, but to do what? The will of God. Let me read this again. Verse one. For as much then as Christ have suffered for us in the in, in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. For he that have suffered in the flesh have ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh. To the lust of men, but to but the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walk in lasciviousness, lust, essence of wine, raveling, banqueting, ab abominating, idolatry, wherein they drink. It's when they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of Ryan speaking evil of you, who. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? For this cause uh, was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they may be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things at hand, be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have favorite, fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one with another without grudging, as every man hath received the gift. Even so, minister to the same one to another as, as good stewards and of manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak the oracles of God. That's the word. Hmm? Speak the word of Yah. Hmm? If any man minister, let him do as the ability which God giveth. 
that, that God and all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, I'm going to stop right there. Listen, we talking about the uh, journey, the dedication. I pray and hope we were edified uh, about the will uh, of God. Uh, the will, the will of Elohim, the, the, the will, the Messiah is the will. The word is the will. The will is the way. Uh, the, the way to be separated, the way that he would uh, uh, bring us into his house. We're going to need to do the will in order to make it to make it to this kingdom. And it's no secret. It's no mystery what the will is to those of us that have received his spirit. The will is his word. First, the written word, then what Abba Yah is telling us about we have spirit. Be obedient to the will, and we will see the kingdom. We can have, uh, we can be confident, we can be bold in saying that. That if I submit myself into this word, kill this flesh, keep my faith in Yahshua, I'm going to get into the kingdom. But you want to can do it through his spirit. Can't do it as according to the flesh. Our flesh is filthy. That's all I got is our Zion. Um, we're going to get into this Hebrew roll call. See what we're talking about. Hallelujah. Let's get it. Hallelujah. All praise to the king. Hebrew roll call. Who we got on here? Let's get Brother Trent. What you got, Hebrew? Would you like to say anything? Maybe not. Let's go on to uh we got a co a, a coachy Darby on here. Oh, he can't say nothing, uh nothing today. Thank you for the word. Hallelujah. Uh would you like to say anything to Coachy Darby? First one All right, hallelujah. We'll go on. Let's get the Walker family in here. He don't got plenty of whooping with me. Hallelujah. What what you got, uh uh Tone? Hey, I, I got a question. Um uh -huh. Talk to me. When I was signing in just now, it was saying that like it's a new app, like this app is going away. So you got any like updates on that? I think it's that one that where the screen is blank because it, it yeah, I think you just got to download a new version. But you probably want to get with Troy an email or somebody. But yeah, I think it's a new version that you got to download. Cause I know I got a new version too. And then, like, uh, anything for the feast of, like, dedication? You got anything on that as well? Nah, we, we, we'll, we'll be sending that out coming up soon. They'll get with you on that. I don't handle that. They'll get with it. All right. Uh, no, somebody, like, oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Now, that's all. Shabbat shalom. All right, bro. Let's see here. Let's get uh, Mother Barbara J. Johnson. Hallelujah. Uh, who else we got on here? Uh, a Koti Monica. About Shalom family. About Shalom. Um, mm, I don't know where to start with today. Um, today's lesson was timely. I had a small battle last night between Yah's will and the flesh, hey. and. I lost the battle and gave into my flesh and had to pray a lot about it last night. Um, it was something small and simple, but I still went against Yah's will and carried out my own will. And afterwards, I felt pretty guilty about it. And so, uh, yeah, I guess I'm getting my my tongue lashing today <laughs> from this lesson. But I'm very Hallelujah. grateful that he is merciful and doesn't Ooh. just throw us away when we mess up because my heart is to do right. Um, there are times where I'm weak and I'm trying to learn how to be stronger and fight. And I know that we're all in that same battle. And so for me, I don't want to beat myself up too much about it. I just want to dust myself off and win the battle next time. Because if I get too hard on myself, then, you know, we know there's the great falling away. I don't want to think I can't do it and just stop trying. But um, 
I also want to take it seriously. So next time I win that battle. So just encouragement for y'all. If you find yourself in the same place that I found myself in and you lose that one battle, just know that we're fighting at war, not battle, you know? So may maybe we lose one, but we win another. But the point is to make it to the end. Love y'all. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Just keep fighting. Pent, keep fighting. Get back in this will. Hallelujah. All praise to the King. May y'all strengthen you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go with uh, a Koti Regina. I don't know if she's still on here. Uh, or is that Brother Wade? I see I'm still lit up. Okay. Let's get, uh, oh, Elder Mikiel Eubanks. Elder Eubanks. Shabbat Shalom, King. Shabbat Shalom, family. Great teaching. Um, covered various aspects. I was thinking as I was listening, uh, situation that I had got into early, earlier with um, a person who professed to be a believer, but the more I, you know, I guess listen to them and see the works that they do with the teachings that they are into, I question. And um, we were in a we were in a conversation, um, and I was I was listening to the person, you know, and basically what they're talking about, they're professing to be a believer, but yet. Their talk is centered, from what I determined, the Book of the Dead, because they were they were commenting on commit. Mm -hmm. and teachings, yeah, and the, yeah, the teachings of commit is out of that Book of Death. And That's my it. question, I wanted to ask the question, this question, you know, even though I knew it would be off, it would be off the lesson, generally speaking. But I wanted to ask, what is, you know, and I started to Google it. What is the the summary of the Book of the Dead? Is that the teachings for the life of the elite within that 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 group of people uh, that commits, or was that for the common people and the elites, or what? Or what you know is that the way of life, like the scripture is for us? What is this? Book of the Dead supposed to be the you know basically the guidelines of well anyway um, I what I did was when I was talking to this person I didn't um, I didn't comment I just listened to him and then they asked me well what did I think about it and and because because we were talking about a scripture and and so then I I told them what. I told him what I um, thought about that particular scripture. And so then they went on to try to teach me about their belief. And I said, well, oh, wait a minute. I said, when you, when you explain what you believed about this particular issue that we were talking about, and basically it was on a text where uh, in Deuteronomy uh, 18.10, it was talking about... Um, Astrologist. Well, I knew this person believed in astrology. So when they were talking, I didn't say anything. I just listened. And so then when I was telling them, they asked me, well, what should I, what was my thoughts on it? So then I just said, well, uh, you know, uh, the scripture talks about astrology and that we shouldn't be participating in. So then they wanted to say how the scriptures had been misinterpreted and all that. And then they went on to teach me. Well, I knew that they believed that. And so then I stopped them because it's like I'm saying all this to say there's a lot of times these people will talk about, and you mentioned it earlier, about flowery things that sound really good, that sound, some of, some of it sounds supposedly scientific and all of this stuff because they would talk about the ancient books, all this kind of stuff. And so I'm like, listen, when you say what you said, I just listen. Why are you trying to teach me? I didn't try to teach you anything. I just listen. Why couldn't you just listen to me? And then they wanted to go on about how they weren't trying to teach me anything, but they were. And so I don't get into arguments with people. And so I just kind of 
let them say what they're going to say. And then they realized that I wasn't going to take it any further. So they quit. But I'm saying that to say this, we will run into these kind of people like what you were reading about. And um, they will, you know, get to talking about these new age concepts which are really old age stuff. They they just call it new age, but they get into these things and they start talking and it sounds good. It sounds real. And it sounds like, uh, and, and then they're, they're, they're implying that it's spiritual, which it is spiritual. And so we can get, you know, we can get in a conversation with these people and they are well versed in what they are into. And if we continue in, I guess it's just like Eve conversing with the serpent. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's best to just shut up and, you know, don't try to dialogue with them because then you end up getting yourself in trouble. But I'm going to stop there. But as far as this teaching was concerned, it was great. And, you know, what I've been praying for is the mind of Yeshua to be so that mm -hmm. if and I know this, if his mind is my mind then I'm going to be walking in his way and I won't make those mistakes and blunders that, 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 you know, that I make just living life and, and maybe following my own mind. Because a lot of times, sometimes, you know, I'm thinking, okay, well, was that me or was that you that I was hearing? <laughs> but then when you think about it in reference to the word, just which what you was talking about earlier, when you when you reference it by that word, then you know whether it's you or whether it's the, the almighty, mighty spirit. But OK, with that, I'm going to just, uh, you know, be quiet and listen to the rest of the saints. Uh, thank thank you for allowing the spirit to use you to bring that to us. And my prayer is that, you know, everyone would be profitable from that word. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. Let me ask you this question. You ain't got to say name. Is it an individual I think it, that, that I know? No, but somebody that knows them. All right. That, that, that believe, believe the same way that they believe. <laughs> All right. So, so I, I'll tell you this, what I told the, the, the brother. Make no mistake about it. Yes. When I'm talking to you, when I'm telling you what I told the brother, I'm going to say his name on it's yes. about converting you to the believer Messiah. And if you don't believe Messiah, you're going to bust hell wide open. It okay. ain't no, it's no middle ground. Because this is what it comes down to, Elder. Either they converting you or you convert them. This is a war that's yeah. going on. There you it, go. It's, it's either your spirit is going to convert them to Yahshua or they're going to convert you to the book of the dead, which is the wicked book. We, we, we yeah. live in the book of the living. You see what I'm saying? Right. So when That's I'm right. dealing with these in, the individual, hey, it's about Yahshua. If we ain't talking about Yahshua, all that other stuff, it don't really mean nothing because, like, I, look, we're, Yahshua is our, he's our measuring stick. He's what we funnel everything to. So if an individual don't believe in Yahshua, that what he, his, his lens, his heart is not going to be bringing forth life. That's right. See, see look, Man, let me say that it says that it's a scripture that says out of the, the, the issues of life come out of the heart, right? Yeah. So yes. what happens if, 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 if we read earlier how it says his his son's spirits came into our heart. So if 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 the son's spirit is not in our heart, what's coming out of these individual heart, which is not coming out of their mouth, is gonna be death. Yes. So unless we go in there with a mindset that man, you fit to get converted under the will of Yah. It, it's war. Let's put it that way. It's war. Somebody yeah. trying to destroy. We. Try, I'm trying to destroy that spirit. Right. When I'm dealing with individuals like that, it ain't no, hey, you my buddy, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm trying to destroy that spirit so we really can be buddies. <laughs> there you go. You know what I'm saying? We, Because we're not buddies if you don't have the same spirit. If you're an enemy to the cross, this is what I tell them. Not, not just him, anybody. That's why some brothers don't like me. If you're an enemy to the cross, you're an enemy to me because you're an enemy to the Messiah. So I understand that. See, the, see, the Messiah understood, Elder, that those, those Israelites that did not believe in him, 
He what did he say? He said, You are your father who? The, the devil. devil. So it's war. But we still have to know how to walk in love and peace and joy, and but still understand it's war. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because and you know what the bad thing is, we're gonna go on to the next. But sometimes the, 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 the individual may not know that they're captured by a demon. So that they don't understand the demon is coming through them to try to take what like that we have out. It's about conquering. It's a war going on. Yes. So so yeah, just just be mindful and like you say, stick with that word. Just just think. Yes, if a brother telling me, <laughs> hey brother, let me go to this book of dead. Say, I don't want to hear nothing about that crap. Get it out of here. We we deal with life. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. Hallelujah. Let me read Colossians 3 real quick. We're going to read that. Hallelujah. What verse? Let me read Colossians 3. Yeah. Because this, I know what it is, because because this dealing with the elements of the uh, the man. Yeah. This good stuff. Colossians 3. It says, I'm going to run it from 1. And, and Elder, I'm glad we brought this up, not just dealing with the individual, because, man, we deal, we deal, people deal with stuff like this, just simply we looking at the video on the internet, or you dealing with even some Israelites who uh, believe in Torah, but they don't believe in the Messiah. And the right, Messiah, yes, that's it's it. It's the same spirit. It's the yes. same spirit that's trying to take your mind, right? It says, that's right. if then. Verse three, I'm sorry, verse one. It says, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. So death is below. So if somebody dealing right. with the book of dead, they dealing with things below, right? It says, seek That's those right. things which are above, which are Christ set on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. For if ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God, when Christ who is our life shall appear, then ye also shall appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affections, evil conspicuous, uh, covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh to the children of disobedience. I'm going to run the whole thing. And in the which ye also walk sometime when we lived in them, but now, watch this beautiful right here. But now ye also put off all things, anger, malice, wrath, well, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. And what? this is where you said you at. Because if Yahshua is not coming out of our mouth, it's yeah. filthy communication. That's right. Because he's clean. Right? Yeah, it's that's that, right. Lie not one to another, saying that ye have put off the old man with his deeds and put on the new man which is renewed in the image after in the knowledge I'm sorry, renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision uh, nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, barn nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on therefore Hallelujah. As the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness, a mind, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and songs with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or in deed, in all, watch this, in all, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Wives, let me just finish uh, reading it. Wives, submit yourselves on your own husband as it's fit in the Lord. Husband, love your wife. And, 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 husband, love your wives. Be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things. For this is the, the will. This is well pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, 
provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things the masters according to the flesh, not with our service as man pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. Singleness of heart, this is, I mean, look, that singleness of heart is, is one heart, one mind. It, it's being direct. It ain't all over the place. It says in singleness and heart, it actually go with the lesson, the singleness of heart. Fearing God, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as the Lord and not unto men, knowing that the Lord, ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But that doeth wrong, but he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he have done, and there is no respect to persons. I just wanted to read the whole thing, but uh, man, this I'm really glad that you did say that because again. We are at war. Yes, and sir. It's, it's either you going to conquer or they going to conquer. So when I'm dealing with an individual that don't believe, I understand it's war. So most of the time I'm front, let them know, hey, we're at war. But our job is to walk in love. But I, I call out that spirit. Now, we can still build, but understand it. I'm trying to get that spirit out you. All you right. understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's how we got to do Cause that that devil ain't playing. That devil want to take our mind. That's right. Yeah. That's, that's, what I, that's, what was, that's what I was telling myself after uh, we had got off the phone and stuff. I was in there like they are determined. I said because I recognized who was behind it, and I was mm-hmm. like I'm trying to really get my mind to change. Yeah. Talking about growing, and yes. I'm like. To me, I'm, I'm I'm still growing, but I'm not going to be growing in the direction that they're growing. <laughs> yes, sir. And yes, I'm sir. like, no, it's not going to happen. Even though I care a lot about the person, it's like, no, I can't go that way. Yes. Amen. I don't see it like that. And according to them, I'm just back in the Christian world. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm, you're I'm a baby. Back in... <laughs> I would have to say you're a baby. I'm a baby. You gotta yeah. Yeah. Right. Man, you you had one of these brothers, uh, uh, very very a lot of people know the brother. I am missing the brother name. This dude was going off reading all these crazy books, and this brother said, uh, "Troy, no one to my we ain't got to miss his name. To my y'all just scared to, to swim with the sharks. Come over here and swim, <laughs> brother. Why would I want to go swim with a shark reading another book that's crazy? I don't want to swim with no sharks. <laughs> but they say these type of words to get you to feel like, oh my God, you." You're in elementary. Once you grow to the spirit, you're going to be, it's going to, it's so many other books out there to open your mind. This dark wisdom, man, miss me with all that foolishness. We stay in the door. I know that's right. But I'm glad you brought that out because it needs to be heard. And even when it's get uploaded online, whoever listened to the lesson, stay with the word. The filter is him. That's, that's how it. we feel everything. Man, these people trying to take our soul. That's right. They don't even, you know, hallelujah. Ain't no little, Bishop used to say, ain't no little baby demons. <laughs> <laughs> when people come acting like they're so sweet and they so nice, and brother, I'm just trying to walk with you. It's all love, brother. Man, you got to love. You got to be able, see, man, we got to come on one accord, walk in love, brother. Oh, I always talk about the Bible. Who you tell me, man, get out of here with that foolishness. We're going to stand this word. You don't like it. Peace out. But good stuff, though, Elder. Glad you brought that out. Yes, All sir. right, praise God. Yeah. Let's go on to the next one. Hallelujah. Let's get our O in here. Uh, uh, Koti T. Would y'all like the Fletcher's family? Yes. Anybody would like to say anything? Shabbat shalom, family. We ain't got much. It was a good word. Hallelujah. Glad to have you on, Hebrew. Uh, let's go with more of uh, Mitchell Lee. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Um, good lesson, as as normal. Um, I think it's uh, important for us to understand um, Yah's will, and it's exactly as you were talking about. We can only follow His will if we're in the Scripture. Um, and I, I think I think of the Scripture that says, you know, He's the Word, the Way, and the Life. You know, if we're mm-hmm. in the word, then we'll find the way and that will lead us to eternal life. So there's this process and the step that we have to follow. And we can't allow um, our own will or somebody else's will to circumvent 
this journey that we're on. We just one step, one step at a time, um, one day at a time. Um, you know, when you when you fall, get up, dust yourself off, pray, go go back, go back to the word. So uh, that is the standard. That is the blueprint for everything that we're going through. And if we follow the world words, then yeah, we're going to be in Yah's will. So I think it's pretty simple. Hard to do, but simple to understand. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Well said. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Hallelujah. So you have some? You know. Yeah, why are you just saying the whole duty of man is just to fear God, keep his commandments? Because the study of Muck's book, books will wear you out. It's weary. And that's the truth. Please ask is 1212. But um, let's get uh, 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 Moray Troy. Now, what you got, Hebrew? I don't know. Can you speak, Troy? He say good word. Yeah. All praise to the Most High. I can't talk today, but blessings. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. Well, that's all we got. Uh, glad to have everybody on. We're going to pray out and get to this 1 Corinthians 110. Uh, hallelujah. Abba Father, we thank you so much, Father. We love you. We thank you uh, again for waking us up. We thank you for giving us uh, time. To, to learn about you, to learn about your son, our king, our Messiah. We, we thank you so much for that you, you, you put the hunger and the desire in us to want to seek and hunger after you. We, we, we didn't wake up and decide that we want to seek and hunger after you. You had to put that desire in us. And we're forever grateful for that hunger and for that desire. We thank you that you will continue to keep us. We pray that you would keep us, that we will uh, have humbleness of, mind, humble, humbleness of mind, as the scripture we just read said. We, we, we thank you, Yeshua, for your love, for your patience, for your long suffering, for your meekness. We thank you for your, hallelujah, your, your mercy, your grace, for your forgiveness. We pray that, that we can continue to walk in your love and your truth. We love when you thank you, Yeshua. Amen. 1 Corinthians 1.10 reads, let me get there. <laughs> now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Hallelujah. Uh, thank y'all for getting on. Love y'all. Uh, continue to stand this rest. Shabbat. Shalom. Bye, everyone. Bye, Love y'all. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.